Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome once again to Kingfisher's YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon, ching ching ching, for notification of up and coming videos. Today I'm going to be talking about summer fish, in particular the flatfish that we catch at this time of year. Fish species like diamonds, um, honeycombs, sandies, thorntails, those are the fish that we will be targeting. Today I'm going to be talking about the hook that I've been using for the last couple of months, actually for the last couple of years. But it's new to Kingfisher. We've now acquired the Marutu agency. And I just want to show you quickly the Marutu hooks. This is the circle hook in the Marutu range. And then this is the J hook. Okay. I'm going to be concentrating more on our Marutu um, circle hooks. And this is our Ato Marutu hook. Just to go through a little bit the features of this Maruta hook. I'm going to open it up. Okay, so there we go guys. It is almost a J, but it is a circle. It is almost straight, but it is offset. So it's one of those crossover hooks, if I can call it that. So it's a crossover between a J hook and a circle hook. It'll do exactly the same as a circle hook, but you can also hit with it. That's what makes this hook so nice and I promise you it is extremely sharp extremely strong it is my favorite hook that I've used I promise you guys if you're not using this as a circle hook there's something wrong this hook is phenomenally strong and sharp I, I can't emphasize how good this hook actually is and if you look at it you'll see that the head part the top part is almost in line with the R. So when you snell it, it's like I said, it's, it's pretty much a J hook at the end of the day. But it's one of those hooks that is absolutely phenomenal for a beginner. You just close your eyes, wait until you feel the pressure on the hook and you can hit, you can do anything you want. So guys, it's a brilliant hook. Okay, here we go. Can't make a mistake with that hook. Other items that I'm going to be using to do this demonstration would be the wire. For instance, I'm going to be doing a lot of FMJs today. I've also got fluorocarbon, so don't, don't uh, knock that one. Okay, so as far as the wires go, I'm using the American fishing wire. I've got three different variations. I've got the red blood wire. Now, if you look at it there, you'll see it's red in color. What makes this unique, it's quite a hard wire with a very thin coating on it. It is ideal for those rough conditions when the sea's up, when you're fishing next to a reef where there's a lot of uh, rolling white water. Guys, the red blood wire can't be beaten for that. You've got, of course, the seven by sevens. Seven by seven is seven strands times seven strands. And it is a lot softer. It comes in two colors. You get, you get the, what I call the sand color, the, the camo sand color. And that becomes totally translucent when it's lying on the sand. Again, it's very soft, very supple. For those days when you're fishing in crystal clean water and the bite is hard to come by, that is the kind of uh, wire that I like to use. You get the 7x7 seven seven in black. Ideal for nighttime conditions. And again, um, very soft, very supple. Guys like black. There we go. We've got it in black now. You ask the question, why use wire? You're fishing for fish that don't have teeth. Well, very simply, when fishing for skates and um, those flatfish like uh, thorntails, um, honeycombs and that, they've got a very abrasive 
tail. The spike on it is about that long and it is extremely sharp. It does fray on your line if you're using line and I will be making a trace out of our fluorocarbon. Um, and a lot of times you'll fight the fish for an hour and all of a sudden you come back and you'll find that you've got that much nylon left and it's all frayed up because the tail is hitting on it the whole time. And uh, of course the, the spike has worn through it or the tail has worn through it. Another reason we use wire a lot here in KZN is because there's a lot of sharks. You get a lot of grey sharks. The raggies are around. You get the zambies up at uh, Umtanzini and that. So guys, we use it a lot because of those things. You get the blackfin. If you're fishing up at Vidal, at Sudwana, we use a lot of wire. Okay, just as an extra precaution, um, I will be doing, like I said, a trace using fluorocarbon. I'll show you how to tie that. Other items that we require for it is our NT swivels. Okay, very important to use an NT swivel when you're using wire. The reason being, the NT swivel has got a little curve on it. So when it runs down your wire, it doesn't give you the pigtail that, for instance, the normal power swivel will give you. But it's got a smaller area. When the sinker runs down it, or the fish takes off, or when you're actually striking and pulling against the swivel and your sinker, you get that little curly pigtail. If you create a bigger area over which that wire runs, less chance of the pigtail. And that's what that NT swivel does. Now for doing our stopper knots, we can either use the Kingfisher number one uh, swivel, that's our barrel brass swivel. And the reason we use number one, it works perfectly on our 90 pound. Okay. Um, otherwise, we use a soft nylon. I'm going to show you how to tie this. It doesn't damage the wire at all or the nylon. I mean, it's very hard to put one of these crimps on your fluorocarbon because it damages the fluorocarbon. But also, if you crimp it too hard, you could damage your wire. So I prefer to use nylon, but I'll show you both methods here. And again, we've got our beads. The reason we use the beads is for the swivel. It's a pretty much a stopper that we use for the swivel to go down. And as soon as it gets to the end of the actual swivel, it will lift up your bait and move it off when the fish is moving. Color-wise, it's up to you. Okay. We've got greens, we've got uh, reds, there's clears available. It's up to you as an individual which bead you'd like to use. But here at the Kingfisher, we've got both colors. Okay. Further ado, I'm going to start our traces. I'm going to start off doing, what have we got here? Red blood wire. Um, it comes in, and if I'm correct, 9.2 meters. This is 90 pound, 9.2 meters. The 7 by 7s come in 5 meter rolls, eh? Just remember that, come in 5 meter rolls. Okay, so 90 pound, here we go. Lengthwise, as far as the length of the trace goes, you can make it anything from 1.2 to 1.6 meters, depending on your casting style. If you're waiting, you're going to make it a lot shorter. If you're standing on a point, you're going to make it longer. And of course, with longer rods, a longer trace works. Longer trace means more chance of landing the fish, less chance of getting cut off as well. So, here we go. Uh, 1.6. Okay, so what I'm going to do to do the snell is basically take my 90 pound, and I'm going to put my glasses on. I'm going to take my 90 pound, I'm going to stick it through the eye, working from the bottom up. Okay. I'm just going to change my hands around so you guys can see it a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pinch the wire with the, these two fingers like that. That's all I'm doing. Okay. So I've got the wire. I'm going to take this and bend it back to 90 degrees and wrap it around five times. That's all I'm going to do. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm keeping pressure on the wire the entire time. I then take my 90 pound and I go through the top, down. There we go. 
and we pull tight. At this stage, I'll take the lighter and actually melt the plastic ever so slightly. And the reason we melt it is so that the, wire, the plastic actually holds the knot together. If I did not, and I'll say that again, if I do not melt it with a, li or with a lighter or apply any heat, what happens is the minute I let go, you can see how the knot is starting to undo itself. Okay, you see that? So we don't want that to happen, so we pull tight. I'm just going to grab the lighter quickly. There's my lighter. So the easiest way to do it is stick it against a burglar guard, um, anywhere where you can actually apply pressure to, it, to the hook and pull on the actual wire. I'm just going to put the wire down here. And I'm going to take my lighter and just lightly melt the plastic. And we pull tight. There we go. And if I let go now, there we go, it stays together. That little tag end over there, I'm just going to cut off nice and neatly. So there we go, there's the snell complete. And don't forget, if you want to see um, how to tie these knots, top right hand side corner is a link to knot tying, especially with wire. So, top right hand side guys, just click on it and it'll show you how to do these knots. Okay. So I'm going to place that there. I'm going to take one of our Kingfisher number one crimps. And I'm going to show you how to attach that. Now all I do is stick the number one crimp down. And we're going to go down depending on how much movement you want in it. And bearing in mind, this is a very hard wire. So there's not going to be a lot of movement on the bottom. So I'm going to make that about 600 in length. I take my round nose pliers. Of course, you can get crimping pliers and do it with crimping pliers, but I'm just going to use my round nose. And with the round nose, in the center, I'm going to squeeze it. And then I'm going to turn it 90 degrees, squeeze it again, and once again, 90 degrees, and just squeeze it again. So that is basically what it looks like when I've finished. Okay. So that's it there. Then I'm going to take a bead. Because I'm using red blood wire, I'm just going to take another color. Um, if I was using red normally, I would put a red bead. But just so you can see it, I'm going to take one of our Kingfisher green beads and stick it on. There we go. So there's one of our green beads, just so you guys can see it, but normally red with red. I'm then going to take our NT swivel. And this is a number three NT swivel. And the reason we use the bigger NT swivel, it gives more movement. So if there was sand or dirt or little grass or sticks or whatever it is that got stuck in it, it's still going to move. And that's the important part about the NT swivel. Just make sure there's enough movement in it. If you choose one that's too small, the chances are good some sand gets stuck in it and then it doesn't move as freely. Okay. The more freely the swivel actually moves, the less resistance there is on it, the better the fish actually feeds. Okay, so there we go. There's the NT swivel. Now to finish this whole uh, trace off, I'm going to take a number one power swivel. And you say, why number one? Why such a big swivel? The reason we use such a big swivel is so that whoever is going down to land your fish, your fishing partner, when he grabs the wire and he's holding on it, the swivel will come to the end of his hand here and you've got something to hold on to. If the fish decides he wants to shoot off, that big swivel doesn't rip through your hand. You can just let go. Okay, if it was small, it would rip through your hand and end up cutting your hand. Okay, just remember that. So we use quite a big one for that purpose, that you've got something to actually hold on to when you're actually leadering the fish to the beach. Okay, how we tie it? 
is a figure of eight. Okay, so I'm going to put the wire through and I'm going to tie a figure of eight. Here we go. So I'm going to give myself enough tagging to work with. I'm going to go over once. I'm going to go over twice. So there's my two loops, guys. I take the tag end through the back. But when I do that, I'm going to open up the loop. So I've got something to hold on to. So there we go. I'm opening it up. I'm going to take these two fingers here and stick it in there. And then put the wire through the loop. There we go. There's the figure of eight. Can you see it? I'm just going to pull it down closer to my hand. Make it smaller because I don't want to waste too much wire. There we go. Can you see how that figure of eight is becoming a lot smaller? You also ask, why do I put a loop there? So that I can actually hold it with these two fingers and it doesn't form a kink in the wire. It doesn't kink my wire. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull tight. So there we go. You can see that the knot is actually pulling tight on itself. I'm now going to just stick it in a vise. I'm just going to put it back into these two fingers here. I'm going to stick it in a vise or use a pair of pliers. This is a side cutters, but I'm just going to use this. So here we go. I'm going to pull tight. I'm just going to try and do it this way so you guys can see what happens. I'm going to leave the knot there. Can you see there? I'm now going to pull tight on it. There we go. You see how the knot is actually pulled tight over there? There is no kink in that part of the actual wire. I'm just going to lubricate. And I'm going to slide it down to where the swivel is. And you'll see there's no kinks in the line at all. Ech, there's no kinks in the wire, sorry. So I'm going to put it in there. All I'm going to do now is attach my hook to the burglar guard, the door, wherever you've got a pulling area, and pull that knot completely tight. I'm just going to do it over here, guys. So there we go. I'm going to stick it on there. A secure area. I'm then going to take my round nose pliers and stick it in there. So it gives me something to pull on. And I'm just going to pull tight quickly. And there we go. So there we go. You can see the knot has pulled tight onto the swivel. I'm going to take my side cutters and cut it nice and neatly. You can see now that the knot is pulled tight. All I've done is taken it and just gone like that, just to straighten out the swivel. And there we go, guys. There's the completed trace using a 90 pound red blood wire. And as you can see, it is quite a stiff wire, but it's very thin. And that's what makes it very, very nice to use. Okay, so there's the first one completed. I'm just going to leave that one over there. And don't forget, when it comes to tying the figure of eight on wire, top right hand side, there's a link to show you how to do it a lot slower. Okay, now, put all my stuff back. I'm going to show you how to tie the 7x7 seven seven camo. I'm just going to grab one of my empty swivels out there. Grab another circle hook. My Marutu Ato. Uh, yeah. And the power swivel. We're using the same components as we did for the red blood wire. We're going to use for the 7x7. Seven 90 seven, pound. Okay, so all I'm going to do... And again, because it's 5 meters, we're going to make this trace 1.2 uh, 1 meters. It allows us to get four traces out of it. Okay. So we're going to make it 1.2. You get roughly four traces out of it. One, two. I'm just going to cut it there. The 7x7 seven seven is very soft, very supple, and that's why we like to use it. It's a competition wire, so for the guys at Fish Competition, we use this a lot. And when you place it on the sand, it goes almost totally translucent. It's soft, it's supple, it's everything that you want in a wire. But, like I said, 
a lot softer. And it works extremely well when you're fishing in flat, calm conditions. And as you know, skates like flat, calm conditions, guys. They don't like rough uh, water. Um, they don't like fighting against current and that. So when you're targeting them, look for those flat, deeper holes, deeper troughs, where there's a lot less water movement. And I promise you, you'll be surprised how many more skates you actually find there. Especially the diamonds, honeycones, um, sandies, don't mind it too much. Thorntails love flat, calm conditions. Okay, so here's my Ato Marutu. And again, we're going to do it exactly the same way. Like I said, top right hand side will take you to the link on how we snell this. So there we go. You get a close up on it, you'll see it's pretty much snelled. I don't need to burn it. But there is my figure of eight, my snell done. Because it's a soft, supple line, um, it's not like our red blood line that is hard. I like to tie a stopper knot using nylon. Okay. The nylon will not damage the plastic coating, so the salt water won't get in. You can reuse the trace a couple of times. When you're using that kind of a system over there where you're crimping, you could damage the plastic because you could push too hard. Okay, so I use a nylon to tie a figure of eight and how we do it. And again, figure of eights, like I say, show you how to tie it, top right hand side corner. One, two, three times, back through. There's my figure of eight. Okay, the nice part about this now when you put it closer together, is I can judge how long I want it to be and just move it up or down depending on the length that I want it to be. So 600 is always a good uh, measurement for me. A little bit of lubrication there to pull the knot tight so you don't burn the actual nylon. And there we go. Figure of eight done. Remember to use a soft supple line when doing this. A hard fluorocarbon line doesn't tie as well, but a soft supple line works extremely well. So now all we do, take our mustard scissors, cut the knot off as close as we can on both sides. There's our stopper knot. But I always like to tie two of them. One is good, two is better. And again, all I'm going to do is the figure of eight again. I'm just going to do it again. Okay. So there's my stopper knot complete, guys. As you can see, two figure of eights. And the reason I use two is when you've got an eight ounce cone or a grapnel sinker on, um, you've thrown your bait, you get the bite, and you hit against the actual fish, and you start winding in because you've missed the fish for any particular reason your sinker pulls against the actual knot. If you do not pull it tight, and you do not use two of those, the knot might slide all the way down. And you don't want that happening. So tie two stopper knots, and you're good to go. Now, bead, beads again, your own personal preference. You can use green ones, or you can use red ones. Just so that you can see, I'm gonna use the red one here today on this particular trace. Okay, so there is my bead that goes down to my stopper knot. So the stopper knot prevents the bead from going any further. <clears throat> I then take my number three empty swivel, stick that on, and you can see there's a lot of movement there in that wire. Okay, <clears throat> finish it off, take my number one power swivel, and we're tying a figure of eight. And if you want to see how to do it again slowly, top right hand side corner. Okay, to tie it, one, two, and that's what's so nice about this wire. It's like tying nylon. You can't make a mistake with it. Take that through the back. <clears throat> and again, I always like to open it, put my two fingers in, form the figure of eight. There we go, there's the figure of eight. Pull tight. Take the knot, slide it down. So there we go, if you can see a nice close-up of it. There's the figure of eight, tied with a seven by seven. Ties a gorgeous little knot. Take your side cutters, cut off the tag end, 
and you'll see there's a little bit of a thing. You just take your fingers, you go like that, bend it in the opposite direction to what the actual bend is, and that little thing is now gone. So there is <clears throat> seven by seven tied absolutely perfectly for your diamonds, your browns, sandies, your flatfish. And again, it's soft and supple. And I'll just show you why we like to use it. For instance, that's the mouth. The hook is always going to set perfectly because it runs around. You see how it runs around? Look at that. It runs perfectly around the jaw. So when that fish is moving away with your bait, the hook sets. Okay. So there's seven by seven. <clears throat> The black is exactly the same, guys, exactly the same as the camo. So I'm not going to tie that one. I'm going to tie a fluorocarbon one for you. Okay, this is a nylon version. And again, it works extremely well when you're fishing for finicky fish. It's totally translucent, um, very abrasive resistant. <clears throat> so again, 1.5, 1.6 meters, it's up to you. Cut that off, take our Eito Marutu, and again, <clears throat> like I said to you before, the easiest way, and this is a snell, so top right hand side to see the original snell, I'm just going to snell it using my figure of eight, and again, you can do it three times, you can do it four times, you can do it five times, you can do it as many times as you feel comfortable with. But three to four times is more than max. The knot actually pulls along the shank of the actual hook. And that's the main part about the snell. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Take the nylon through the back part of it. There we go, through the back. Keep all four of those, those little loops together. And I'm using this hand to just pull the knot Smaller, you can see they're just getting smaller and smaller and smaller as I pull them. There we go, guys. Can you see it there? Getting smaller, smaller, smaller. When they're small enough, all I'm going to do is just take my mouth, pull the, the tag end, and on the line part, evenly. There we go. There they are, they're sitting perfectly together. Now I'm just going to stick it in a vise. Okay, so there you can see how the four nylons are sitting together. And that's the best way to explain it to you. If they're not sitting exactly in line, cut, redo. Okay. Strongest knot you can get because the knot actually pulls down on the actual shank of the hook. The eye is just there to allow the hook to turn. Okay. So... Take your scissors, whatever it might be, and cut off the nylon, nice and neatly. There we go, guys. So there's my snell complete. I'm now going to take <clears throat> my nylon, and I'm going to make this about 600. I love 600 for some reason today. Okay, so there's a soft, supple line. This is a hard fluorocarbon line. Okay. And all I'm going to do is a figure of eight. So there we go, guys. You can see how they've seated perfectly in line. Cut off the tag in there. Be very careful now when it comes to cutting the second one that you cut the right one and not the fluorocarbon. Trust me, I uh, make hundreds of traces and I still make that mistake every now and again. Okay, and again, one is good, two is better. And like so. So it's nice and neat. So if you can have a, a look there, you'll see figure of eight, figure of eight, coming onto our hook over there. Now, some guys say, yeah, but it'll slip, it'll do everything, it's fine. Take some UV knot sense, you can put a drop of UV knot sense there, it'll secure it even more, or a drop of super glue if you want. The super glue won't affect the fluorocarbon, the same as doing it on the seven by seven, you can put UV knot sense, you can put um, glue, super glue on it. It won't affect the actual nylon or the knot at all. 
So you put a drop of uh, UV knot sense or super glue on there if you're worried that you're not pulling it tight enough. Okay, especially for the youngsters or the young girls and that are trying to make their traces. Um, your teeth, if you're pulling, it's not strong enough. If you don't have a vice, a bit of super glue, UV knot sense, you're good to go. And again, <clears throat> I'll just use a green bead on this one. Now I'll use an orange bead. I'll just use an orange bead. It's just easier to see. Okay, so there's the orange bead. <clears throat> I personally, when tying these kind of traces like this, I prefer to use a clear bead. But just so you guys can see, there's your bead there. Because I'm using a fluorocarbon, I don't need to use an NT swivel. I just use a normal um, number three power swivel. Okay, so I'm using a number three power swivel on the fluorocarbon over there. So you've got a lot of movement up and down your actual line. I still, however, use a number one power swivel for the top. So you take the number one power swivel, <clears throat> like so. Because I'm using nylon, the knot that I tie is a figure of eight. I do it three times, not twice like we did on wire. Just remember that. Working with wire, you do it twice. Working with nylon, you do it three times. One, two, three times. Back through the back. Everything applies exactly the same. Take your fingers, put it inside. Form your figure of eight, a bit of lubrication, pull the knot tight, slide it up. To make sure that it's nice and tight and secure, we're just going to put it on our burglar guard once again. And again, like I said before, when your friend, your fishing partner actually grabs a leader, that swivel there sits like that and he's got something to hold on, to pull with, to help you land the fish a lot faster. If the fish does decide to go, you can let go and the fish will carry on. You can grab the, the leader later on and again, start pulling it. If the swivel is too small, it will rip through your hand, cutting your hand over here. And I promise you, you, you won't enjoy your fishing for the rest of the, the session that you have. So there we go. Another little trick that we use is uh, one of these uh, quick clips. There they are there. It pretty much looks like this. So this would be your leader from your rod. This will be the quick clip over here. I just want to show you. This one here, and I'll give you, is a size one. How it works is if you can get a close up here, you'll see there's a little gap between the actual uh, clip part. So when it comes to tying your knot, always on the top part of that open area, you tie your actual um, leader. The bottom half, which is closed, because it's actually touching that, goes to the bottom. So how this works is, you grab your leader, you take your swivel, you go in, up, and if you pull, it goes into it like that. It's as quick and easy as that. There's your strength, there's everything that you want to do. If you want to change your trace, so like I said to you before, there's what you're holding on to when you're fighting your fish. Uh, as far as a person goes that is actually uh, trying to help you land the fish. If you want to take it off and change your trace, for instance, you've just been bitten off by a shark, all you do is take the whole thing, push it backwards, and it's off. That's how easy these clips work. I'll show you again. Take it from the top, slide it in there, over the actual uh, loop, I'll show you. It goes up over the loop like that. And again, I'll show you. Up over the loop, and you just pull it, and it goes in. Okay, take it loose. You just go back on itself. It's as easy as that to change the actual clips, guys. Very, very quick and easy. That's why they call them quick clips. Um, yeah, that's a number one. That's the one that I use most of the time. They're extremely strong. There's 50 kilos to open that, which is not going to happen when you're fighting a, a flatfish. And that stays permanently attached to your reel. You can wind it through your eyes. As long as you wind it through slowly, you won't damage your eyes. That stays on your actual trace, your leader, 
and you're good to go, guys. Go out there and enjoy. Don't forget, everything that you've seen us use here in the demonstration today is available from leading tackle stores nationwide as well as from our Kingfisher branches. Go out there and enjoy, guys. See you on the beach.